Hi there everyone, I'm Optic Rainfall. I'm the current world record holder for the any percent category for My Little Pony A Maritime Bay Adventure, as of this video being released. I've been speedrunning this game for a year now, learning all the tricks and also discovering some of them. Whoa, what? 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 What was that? I've been finding ways to optimize routes and strategies to achieve the lowest times I can get. And right now, I'll be giving an analysis on my recent world record run for any percent, detailing what I did to achieve a time of under 10 minutes. Let's begin at the very start of the run. Now, after pressing play, you go into a loading screen and you see this heart in the logo that acts as a loading icon. And right after it's full, I press B to skip the cutscene that shows up after a second. All the cutscenes throughout this run, I was able to skip them with great timing. Though there are a couple of them near the end that I will go into detail about later as we get to them. So the game starts where I go right, and first I jump from the top of the slope and try to land just where the bottom of it is, and then jump again to get a boost. I wasn't able to boost from there, but still I jumped once again as I landed while going right. And then I had to wait a little to jump again to get over the log that was laying across the path. If I was able to get a boost, whether big or small, I would keep doing perfectly timed jumps continuously, even when going over the log, until I got to the bunny that was waiting further down the path. Doing those jumps will maintain the boost from the slope, which we call speed conservation, and that would have saved me over a second if successful. So I get to the bunny, skip a cutscene, follow it, and I get to the step I have to jump over. Once I landed on the edge of it, I jumped again and glided Sunny to where she would hit the ground and into an invisible barrier at the same time. That saves just a little bit of time than just running, because Sunny hitting the wall and the ground will stop her from moving instantly, and her dialogue that starts once the bunny hops into the hole won't have much delay. If you just run, Sunny will slide, and her dialogue will start a little bit later. So next up, after skipping the tutorial clip, was going up this cliff by bouncing off the flower, and right when Sunny landed, the bunny just turned around, and because of that, its actions to jump and then head for the hole was delayed. All the bunny had to do was jump just when Sunny landed without having to turn, and then head for the hole, so this lost me a few tenths of a second. And you would hear me uh, get frustrated about this in the video. Oh my god, every time! This is RNG by the way, so there's nothing I could do about it, but at least it wasn't far away from the hole, which would lose me a bit more time. After that, I went up another cliff, then proceeded to do backskip, bouncing off the flower and going over the barrier, and my split for Bright House Hills ended at 54 seconds. 52 seconds is possible if I got that big boost from the slope at the start, and a good RNG bunny. Now we go into Crystal Bright House, and straight away, I go up the path to run into a wall in the spot where it's above the pink flowers to get a no slide. Unfortunately, Sunny did slide because I didn't go right into the wall, and so I lost a couple tenths of a second from that. After a cutscene and a tutorial, I went down the lawn slope. Then I timed my first jump just when I got that third star bit going down, and did a couple of jumps to get boosts on both, which I did with great success. I couldn't do another because I would go too far towards the rock platform, and wouldn't be able to make it up by jumping a certain distance away. It's about how fast Sunny is going, and you need to be careful on where you are jumping to. Now for Logless. What I did was try to go along the lower part of the platform, so that I can maintain Sunny's speed as I keep going right, and not having to turn much. So I jumped and was barely able to make it up the cliff, but Sunny was cleaning onto the edge a little too long. I probably could have timed my coyote jump slightly a bit later, so that I can make a cleaner landing and save about half a second. 
I tried doing another no slide into where the edge of the shadow of bushes meets the wall, since that's where the cutscene barrier is closest to. It kind of worked, Sunny did a bit of a slide, but it can be done better to shave off a couple tenths of a second. So now I need to get the three items to fix the bridge, and I got the slow boost after grabbing the paint can. I went to get the logs second after the paint because the route is faster than getting the hammer next. Also, I got another slow boost after grabbing the logs, though I could have made a sharper turn around the corner after that. And after getting the hammer and bouncing off the flower, I finished doing a no slide interaction with Izzy by jumping at the spot where Sunny is aligned with the bush that's closest to the fence above. After fixing the bridge, I got a good slow boost down the path and headed towards the far right of where it hitches, since the barrier to trigger the cutscene is closer there. Afterwards, I had a tiny bump passing the tall tree to get to the bunny on the tree up ahead. After kicking it down, I followed the bunny closely behind, while staying a bit on the left, so that as I herded it and another one to where it hitches, I could easily turn around to go up again quickly. So the method I'm using for the last bunny to herd it straight down towards the hole isn't actually any faster than having it do a curve to the right. So as long as you have the bunny going down and following it, there won't be any time loss. Now for the carrots. I go up to the first one and do a no slide. I focus on the confetti that is near the gate and have Sunny jump just when she's about to pass them. I was quick enough to turn around when collecting the first carrot, and I was able to do the same with the other two carrots after performing the double carrot. At the end, I jumped off the edge of the cliff with an early coyote jump, so that I could just get in range to interact with Hitch while succeeding a no slide. Now for doing the ash skip in the first minigame. I do a chant saying ash skip a few times, which isn't doing anything, just sort of a thing I do. Go! Ash skip, ash skip, ash skip, ash skip. So anyway, doing the ash skip, what I do is time two B button presses to trigger the ash skip instead of spamming it. And how I time both my taps is that I focus on the clip in the tutorial. For this case in Hitch's Hurting, when the clip replays a second time, you'll see these two rocks above Sunny, and I time my taps once she passes them to do the ash skip. After exiting out quickly, I finished the split at exactly 10 seconds, and I was a couple hundredths of a second away from a gold split, which is good enough. You'll see that I've saved a lot of time, and the reason I've saved over a second was because in my previous best, I messed up with exiting out, so I was able to do it right in this run. Next for Hitches and Pip scene, both of each have just one cutscene to get through, and each of them have uh, separate splits. I was able to time both of those skips perfectly. For Hitch, when the loading screen disappears, I wait for a brief moment to hold B to skip. And for Pip, I time my press right when the heart is full in another loading screen. So now we move on to Main Street to do Bunny Skip 2.0. I had a bit of a slip jumping onto the barrel, but I was still able to get over onto the stall. I did a quick hug against the right of the sign as I landed before turning around to jump to the platform above Hitch's office. I avoided the piñata since I need that when I come back to Main Street. And now I'm going left while doing some platforming. When jumping onto the scaffolding, I would try landing on the pole on the left so that I can jump off of it to get on top of the flower's hitbox without bumping and slowing down. 
I did all that just great. And after jumping to go on top of the litter bin's tall hitbox, I jumped again going down and landing on the stairs so that I could time another jump to get a slow boost, which I did. I almost got a gold split, but didn't lose much time. We go into Beach Cove, the longest stage in the Any% percent course. Down the stairs, I try to get a boost, but I landed and jumped on the ground, that's just where the stairs meet the bottom, and I didn't get one, so I just kept on running to the left. Doing the race skip, it went really well. I timed my coyote jump late so that Sunny would clean onto and slide along the railing's hitbox smoothly and without bumping off, and then hovered to the left once she bumped into the corner of the railings. I could have pushed left just before she made that bump, and that would have saved time. And so, reaching the bunting flags, I turned down, jumped quickly, and turned back to the left to get over them and land on the beach. Over on the left side of the beach, along the seawall, I went up the ramp, then I had to go through between the railing and the litter bin, while having a bit of a bump while doing so. Then I run into this short stone platform to get a no slide when triggering a cutscene. You have a chance to stumble over it and do a slide, but I was able to stop against it perfectly. After skipping the cutscene to start the billboard quest, I have to jump backwards since Sunny needs to go in the direction that's nearly opposite of where she's facing. I do that each time whenever I need to reverse, because if you don't jump backwards, Sunny will instead turn around for a few tenths of a second without moving. Now these next several parts in the billboard quest, they are nearly all about no slides, which I'll guide you through all of them. For interacting with the first witness, as I go past the litter bin, I jump and land in range of the pony to talk. For the second one, all I needed to do was go over the bush, so that I could jump and land anywhere close to them while covering more distance to run up the road ahead. And for the third witness, I jump just when Sunny is vertically aligned with the green door on the building that's above. For me, I'm using the stone tiles beside the road to see where I need to jump from and land onto, and I was able to do those first three no slides really well. So finally, when going back to talk to Sprout, while Sunny is running left, I focus on the palm tree above and just when Sunny's body is vertically aligned with it, that's when I jump and do another no slide interaction to talk to Sprout. Next is going to Pip where we go down the seawall, and I jump just a little ways away from stepping onto the wooden planks and land in front of her for another no slide interaction. After that, I jumped instantly and went down off the wooden planks to the left to go talk to the paint pony and what happened there was that I failed a no slide. I was supposed to jump when Sunny's head is vertically aligned with the posts that's at the bottom of the ramp. But I jumped too early and Sunny landed too far out of range from interacting with the paint pony. So I quickly took a small step towards the pony while trying not to slide and quickly interacted with her. I lost over half a second for that mistake. I continued on and went towards the pony with a floaty, who is named Cool Floaty. There's a rain of shadows on the ground that are casted by the star bits in the air. By jumping from the middle of the ring going towards Cool Floaty, I was able to get a good no slide interaction. I went to go get the crab from the cave that's to the left of the beach, and when Sunny passed the rock that's closest to the cave, I jumped backwards just to quickly turn right back around and have the crab start following her. So after returning the crab to Cool Floaty, he drops the floaty and I stand next to where it drops and I wait until it stops bouncing so that I can move right away and grab it. The same goes for the paint pony after she drops the paint can after trading her the floaty. The no slide, by the way, to interact with her, I jumped just when Sunny passed the post at the bottom of the ramp. There's not really a good indication of where you can jump, and this one could have saved a bit more time. Now, when I grab the paint, 
I jump after half a second for Sunny to glide into the air, just before the cutscene starts to play, since she can't move half a second after getting the paint. I started to move again up the ramp, past the litter bin, and just when I reach the stone platform, I jump towards the unicycling table for a no slide trigger to use it quickly. Now here, there's a trick you can do called the fast cutscene, and it can only save you half a second more over the no slide. What you would do is have Sunny run close up to the unicycling table, then turn and run to Sprout, and while still in range, you press B to use the table to fix the billboard, while doing a slide towards Sprout for carrying the momentum. You should be able to talk to Sprout if you get close enough in range to interact with him. So once the cutscene plays, talk to Sprout, and just when the smoke clears once the billboard is fixed, hold down B to skip. What happens next is that you'll move on to another cutscene where you talk to Izzy, and while you're still holding B to skip, which was meant to end Sprout's dialogue, the skip will instead end the cutscene with Izzy. You'll spend only half a second with that cutscene, if you hold the B button at the right time. I didn't go for this trick because it's really difficult and I could have lose more time failing at it. So after that cutscene with Izzy, Sunny will be able to move again, but after half a second, she'll stay still until she finishes her victory animation. And what I did was before she did that pose, I turned and jumped in the direction towards the jungle area to cover some distance to save time. Now for the next cutscene that comes up, we can't do a no slide, so I simply went over the cliff step since you'll trigger it faster that way. In this quest, we need to herd three more bunnies to hitch. The fastest route to herd all of these bunnies is by going up north first to get the bunny down from a tree and herd it into these holes to bypass the logs. After it hopped out of the last hole, I had some trouble herding it straight down, but it went further right and I had to slow down to try not to herd it backwards, and I was able to grab the second bunny and herd both of them to hitch. The third and last bunny is on the cliff, which I need to bounce off the flower to get onto. Now we do a fast flower by simply walking onto the flower without jumping onto it. What I got here in this run is called the SS Fast Flower. SS stands for semi-successful, and what that means is that Sunny bounced off the flower out of trajectory, but still landed on the cliff. This flower has a trajectory to bounce Sunny to exactly where the bunny is on the cliff, and normally you would herd the bunny to the left towards a hole near a bridge right as you land, where the bunny will hop towards the hole and pop out of another one back at the right. And then you turn back and herd it into another hole that's next to the cliff further to the right. If you get the SS Fast Flower and not have the bunny move from its spot, you can instead go around the bunny and herd it straight into the hole next to the cliff, which is what I did here. Doing that saves about one second over what you normally would do. So afterwards, I get that last bunny through some other holes and finish up by herding it to hitch. After completing that quest, Sunny would do another victory animation but she needed to turn around, so I was tapping B and pushing left while the scene transition fades out. Then I went up the cliff, crossed the bridge. Further down, I did a couple of jumps while going along a log bridge, since walking on it will slow me down. And then, while heading towards Zip, I jumped half a second after grabbing the last star bit on the path to do a no slide interaction. I lost over a tenth of a second on the split due to not getting a slow boost at the start and failing a no slide, but I was able to recover some of that time from the SS Fast Flower. Now for the second minigame, Zip's Flight. In my previous best, I also messed up trying to exit out of it after triggering the Ash Skip, but I did it right this time for this run. For this minigame, when the tutorial clip replays a second time, you will see Sunny swerve left, then right right, and then after she swerves left to go in the center, 
I time my two B button taps to do the ash skip. Looking back at how fast I exited out, I think I could have done it a little faster, even though I was a couple hundreds of a second from a gold split. The cutscene for zip scene that comes after is a little difficult to time, and I was two tenths of a second too late to finish the split in exactly two seconds. You have to time your B button press just slightly after the heart is full in the loading screen. Now next we spawn back in Main Street, and I run along the road towards the mob of ponies. I run into the last shrub on the way to get a no slide trigger for the cutscene which is the easiest to get. After that I now need to prepare to execute the long stall jump. This trick has killed a lot of world record paces in the past. There are about 3 attempts I've done that were going to be sub 950. A few attempts before this run, I've done some practices and figured out what I needed to do. So, once Sunny takes a couple of steps on the road, I jumped and landed on the barrel, and as I land, I make sure to let go of the controller stick for a brief moment so that she doesn't slide and carry any momentum while I immediately jump backwards and get onto the stall. I made sure I wasn't too close or too far from the corner of the stall, and so I proceeded to jump to the other stall with enough speed and finally get on the platform above Hitch's office. You can do a no-slide by running into the left part of the window that's closest to the edge of where you landed. I didn't get that and I've only lost about a couple tenths of a second. Also, I avoided hitting the piñata, so after skipping the cutscene, the piñata will pop once I continue to jump off the platform towards the entrance to the upper part of Main Street, just before Sunny's victory animation plays, and immediately once she hit the ground, she starts moving again, and I go up to meet with the rest of the main five. When doing the fast flower at the start, you need to be on the right side of the flower when you activate it so that you can easily walk onto and bounce off of it instead of getting stuck on the side. However, just like the fast flower in Beach Cove, you can fail or semi-succeed in the bounce. Getting either will slow you down, so you must get it successfully. So here, I ran up to the flower exactly as I planned. I was hoping that Sunny wouldn't bounce off the trajectory, and sure enough, I was safe, and I went over to kick the button. I then went over to the other side of the area to kick the plank down to make the ramp, and after 17 seconds of watching through two cutscenes, my split ends showing that I've lost 4 tenths of a second. But that's okay, because I was still on sub 950 pace. And all that's left to do is the last minigame, Sprout's Chase. For this one, I timed my two B button taps to do the ash skip, right when Sunny reaches the manhole on the second replay of the clip. And I did it fast enough to get a gold split. And now we get to the last cutscene of the game, where I time my B button press right when the heart is full in the loading screen. I was a tenth of a second too slow, not a big problem, and so, I finished my run at sub 950. So 9 minutes, 49 seconds, and 460 milliseconds is the world record to beat. There's nearly 2 seconds I can potentially save from Bright House Hills, half a second from Crystal Bright House. For Beach Cove, there's one and a half seconds to save, and half a second from the rest afterwards. 944 can be achieved, but that is nearly impossible to get, since there's an extreme amount of luck and skill involved throughout the whole any percent course. And that's about everything in this run, and I hope that this will help improve your time as you make your way to achieving a sub 10 minute run. Or, you might perhaps be a new world record holder for this game's any percent. Thank you for listening in.